Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Machete Mondays. And we have the Camillus Carnivore X, and I have a tick on me. Oh, what a wonderful time of year it is, these little buggers. Sorry, buddy. Speaking of carnivore. All right. So, uh, yeah, hope everybody had a good weekend. We got this uh, titanium bonded. God, it's hurting my eyes whenever the, the shine hits me. Let's just get into it. Okay. All right. Chuck that stuff. Yeah. So we're just gonna try to tunnel our way through some of this stuff. And man, it's a short blade. I'm not used to having such a short one. But uh, yeah, for hunting, fishing, camping, exploring, surviving. Uh, what do you say we go explore over here? just explore these woods it's cutting well um it's, it's got a learning curve to it for me because it's so short and it doesn't have a tip either but see that i would have nailed that thing had i had my longer machete but yeah it's a it's got a good edge on it it's holding a pretty good edge um I don't know what's going to happen with this saw back, but we're not going to try to saw any trees down. I think we're just going to, I don't know, notch something so we can tie some paracord to it. Maybe we'll make a spear with a little knife it came with. All right, let's go find something harder. So I got this here dead piece of oak, and I figured this might be a pretty good tester. That looks dead, too. I can just push that over, can I? Come here, Camillus. I need you. Get down. Okay. I guess you could like send SOS signals with this thing. Let's see if I can hit you with it. Short, short, short. Long, long, long. Short, short, short. Yeah. It's shiny, buddy. It's hit me in the eye a couple times and it's. I don't know. It takes my vision away for a minute. So I've got a down piece of. This looks like. Maybe it's cypress. I tried to see if it had some fat wood in it. It's got a little bit, but it's it's not that it's not that great. And let's just let's just take it easy here, right? Let's just let's just take it easy for a minute and we'll start with the oak. So that thing, that little kick out back in the handle kind of sucks. This is a bit punky. Yeah. This will be a bit harder. Let's see here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Seems like she's cutting well. What if we had to do a little notch? Oh, great, here we go. Here's my favorite thing to do with a machete. Somebody's gonna be like, that's not how you're supposed to hold it. You, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it would saw through some stuff in a pinch, right? Um, but let's not let's not joke anybody right now. This thing getting a saw, it'll get you a notch made. It's got a little flex in the blade now, doesn't it? Let's see if I can show you all that. Is 
it's got a little bit of flex, which is okay, but it's not something you would expect from a short blade. I would expect this thing to be solid. All right, we got real work to do. Okay, let's go find something hard. So I thought I might take a few minutes to talk about the way I earn my money to buy all these machetes and take a break from the machete for a minute. So I did land surveying for a number of years and I moved from land surveying into wetland delineation. And what I do is I go around and I look for hydric indicators, hydrology indicators. Right here we have a crayfish burrow. You can see a little hole. And uh, well, they just burrow down into the ground. They make these little burrows. Um, so that kind of lets me know that we're hanging around around some hydric soil. I'll dig up a plug here. And just take a look at it. Okay. So, very clayey, very mucky. Well, not mucky, but very clay, very loamy. Not much sand content there. It's quite wet. Um, I could squeeze that, and I would have a little bit of water coming through my fingers right there. Uh, we can also see the reduction of iron in this. You can see the little orange bit in there. And that is where iron in the water table is being washed out from the water as the water table goes up and down, up and down. So I know that I have hydric soil down here. I know I have hydrology because I have those little crayfish burrows. I also have what we call water stained leaves. And you can see that water's been pooling here and standing here. These leaves are, well, they're stained. Um, and it's quite obvious that water moves through there. Uh, also, I have vegetation right here. This is an obligate species fern called netted chain fern. And this only grows in wet soil. Um, I'll just go ahead and replant that. There you go, buddy. Uh, we also have some giant river cane right here that only grows in wet. Well, it prefers wet, let me just say that. And if you come with me up slope, we'll move up here and we'll take a look at some soil right here. Okay, so right off the bat, it's different out of the auger. It's kind of falling out of the auger. It's more sandy. It's still damp, but there is, there's no clay content to that. I could try to make some clay out of that and it just falls apart. So I would call that a sandy loam. Uh, as far as veg goes, this guy right here is a upland species fern. This is called bracken fern. And this prefers to grow in non-hydric soils. So based on all of that, I'm gonna pull out a piece of flagging. And I think I'm on, I think this is my 35th flag, A30, Five, nice and legible so the surveyors if surveyors come behind me they can see this and read this and kind of connect the dots but I have a little handheld GPS and I take my own stored location of it and wait for this thing to get some better results 
it's been in my pocket for a minute. And we'll go ahead and store that point. And that's what I've been doing out here. You see all these points that I've taken. So yeah, wetland delineation in a nutshell. Nah, I didn't want you to miss this one. This is my favorite fern. This is called Royal Fern. Very pretty, very bright green. And uh, this is also obligate to wetlands. It has to have wet soil. All right, that's enough. Back to the machete. Tell you what, I'd be willing to bet that stump has got some fat wood in it. Look, man, just from walking around with this thing, I haven't even had it on my belt. Uh, just walking around with it, one of these uh, one of these rivets popped right out. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. But I guess the thing on the sign said quality knives since 1876 it didn't say anything about sheets so we're just gonna we're gonna let that slide camillus all right let's see what we got going on here nice tonk sound oh my god what do you think we think we can split some Ooh. Ooh. yeah crack some off oh yeah Oh yeah, I'll just let y'all look at that. Get out of my way. Yeah. Getting to the, the good stuff now, buddy. How you doing, Cammy? That's what we're gonna call her, Cammy. Camillus Cammy. Oh yeah. I think I might wanna put some of this stuff in my backpack. That's some... That's some nice resiny stuff. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Tell you what, y'all just scratch your screen right there. Give that a whiff. <laughs> we ain't there yet with technology. All right. Um, we gave her the business, buddy. In the cross grain on some fat wood. Y'all saw me do it. All right. The Camillus Carnivore X. I think that's, I think that's an okay little knife, an okay little Walmart buy. Um, yeah, man. I'm actually surprised. Handle's still on good. Um, looks like our edge is still good. I mean, it, I really don't see any problems with it. Um, it says you can dig holes with it. You don't want to dig a hole with it? This is tough for me to do right there. As I learned, never put your knife in the dirt. Yeah. So we're just digging a hole with our knife. Oh yeah, chopping roots. Yeah, okay, so it, it'll dig. So this part of the saw back kind of sucks, right? It's hard to do any fine detail work with that saw back cutting into your tender little thummy. Um, but now we're taking some fat wood that we just chopped up. 
And this is a, a bunch of cedar fur. And it looks like Camillus left us a 90 degree spine on there. So what do you think? There she goes. It'll hold up, man. All right, the Camillus Carnivore X. It's got my seal of approval. Thanks for watching, guys. Ain't no need to write a song.